So here's what I think is going on. I think that there is a big war right now behind the scenes between the Biden-Harris ticket and the Democratic uh, Party and the DNC and President Obama, which I'm going to get to in more, more detail in a moment. I think that the Democratic Party realizes they have a huge problem on their hands because they have this sympathetic, well-meaning or not elderly president that a lot of Americans deem incompetent. And then the second in line to the throne, Kamala Harris, is an absolute moron who also Americans are not happy with. According to a recent poll, Kamala Harris has a 28 percent approval rating. So I think that Biden and Harris are trying desperately to stay, but there may be some other things going on. Let's quickly listen to what Kamala said, uh, Vice President Harris, excuse me. Uh, actually, I'm, I, that may have sounded sarcastic. I think it's important to to be respectful and refer to these people by their titles. So I shouldn't colloquially refer to our vice president by her first name. Let's listen to what Vice President Harris said about the special counsel report with regard to Biden's age. So the way that the president's demeanor in that report was characterized could not be more wrong on the facts. <laughs> really? And clearly politically motivated, gratuitous. Politically motivated. I guess she's referring to the fact that special counsel Robert Hur was a U.S. attorney uh, during the Trump administration. Maybe that's what she means. Or if you go along with the little Julie Hartman skepticism, maybe she's talking about her own party. How there's a political motivation from her own party to admit to the American people, say what we already know, that President Biden is unfit, and that is starting the ushering out process. Okay. So I did a Julie noted clip a few months ago, and I got to say, I'm pretty proud of it. I think it's aging really well, where I made this argument that the Democratic Party, the Democratic establishment is trying to lay the seeds to push President Biden out. Unlike uh, Joe Biden, your clip is aging well. <laughs> yes, exactly. Sorry. I had to. No, it's true. And I talked about these various uh, examples, one of them being from David Axelrod, who was a senior advisor to President Obama. He was head of President Obama's uh, presidential campaign, and he put out a tweet a few months ago, let's pull it up, picture number seven, where he was essentially uh, bashing Biden. He was implying, or stating overtly actually, not even implying, that President Biden is acting in his best interests by staying in the uh, the race. Only Joe Biden can make this decision. If he continues to run, he'll be the nominee of the Democratic Party. What he needs to decide is whether that is wise, whether it's in his best interest or the country's. That was in November of 2023. So Dave, that's pretty powerful for David Axelrod to come out and say that. Another example of the establishment kind of, I think, turning against President Biden, we even saw this weekend I was watching CNN this weekend and my jaw was on the floor. Abby Phillip was doing an entire hour long show basically saying why President Biden ain't it. I'm showing you a photo from my uh, kitchen or I guess my parents kitchen, uh, their TV, where Abby Phillip is showing how many interviews President Obama and President Trump had done at their time in office when they were three years and a few weeks into their presidency. And then compare that with Joe Biden. So you see Obama at this time had done 422 interviews. President Trump had done 300 and President Biden had done 86. That's pretty amazing that CNN, which is pretty pro Biden, is even running a story like that. Also, why were you watching CNN? <laughs> why not? Oh, I mean, it's, no, it's a good question. Your time in better ways. Well, you know what? I'm awfully glad I did because I think it enhanced this show today. Huh? No, I don't. <laughs> She said, uh-huh. All right. All it's right. true. I Am I wrong? No. I, I don't do it often. All right. I will. I mean, I, I don't do it often. I, I don't really, uh, I don't have CNN in my apartment. I don't have cable TV in my apartment. But uh, I was watching because I wanted to see what they were saying. I was really curious to see how they were going to react to this disastrous press conference. And this is how they reacted. Also, the New York Times, which is super pro Biden, or at least very, very anti anything that would be seen as giving credence to the Republican Party or to Trump. They ran three 
I repeat, three editorials this weekend in which they said... President Biden ain't it. This is a quote from the editorial board's uh, opinion piece. His assurances, President Biden's, didn't work. He must do better. The stakes in this presidential campaign are too high for Mr. Biden to hope that he can skate through a campaign with the help of teleprompters and aides and somehow defeat his manifestly unfit opponent as Donald Trump. So that was one. And then there were two other stories. Here are the titles. Mr. President, ditch the stealth about health. And then another one, even more kind of a hardliner. The question is not if Biden should step aside, it's how. Amen, right? Yeah, no, to pile on. I was watching Real Time with Bill Maher on Friday. Yep. And he was adamant that Biden has to go, that that at the uh, convention they should swap him out. Mm-hmm. He was, he was, he's, I mean, for Bill Maher to go that far. I think there's a lot of there's a lot of Democrats oh. that realize this is not OK, man. Absolutely. This is not, man. A, this is not a joke, man. Not a, <laughs> not a joke. <laughs> not a joke. Uh, no, absolutely. I mean, that title, the question is not if Biden should step de- aside. It's how that is what I think is going on right now. They are trying to figure out how they are going to get him off the ticket. And by the way, a few months ago. I think it was at the end of 2023, maybe beginning of uh, 2024, President Obama made a visit to the White House. Remember that? And remember there were reports that President Biden, or excuse me, President Obama was very animated when talking about the 2024 election. What I think happened in that conversation is President Obama said to President Biden, you need to make some changes or some changes are going to happen. And here's what I think they're going to do. And putting my flag down in this unoccupied territory. Hopefully it's going to age well. There are a few options here, and I think they're going to they're gonna pick uh, one of them. The first is, I think what they're going to do is reach a deal with President Biden and the First Lady and say, okay, here's what's going to happen. We will allow you to stay on the ticket, but Kamala has to go. But the way that they have to get, the, the way that they uh, have Kamala leave while having, sorry, Vice President Harris. I'm trying to be so respectful here. The way they have- A little decorum, Ms. Harper. Yeah, you know what? For shorthand, I'm just going to go with it. Forgive me for being impolite. The way that they're going to have Kamala go and have her save face is they're going to need to give her a really cushy, prestigious position, such as, oh, I don't know, the presidency of Harvard University. I hear there's a job opening there. I also hear there's a job opening where many people would favor a black woman. Huh. So maybe that happens. Maybe they go, okay, because they, they cannot have those two on the ticket. They can maybe have one, but they cannot have two. So I, what they may do is they go, okay, President Biden, you're going to stay on the ticket. Kamala's going to go, and we're going to usher in either Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama. And then once President Biden wins, if he wins, In 2025, I anticipate that we will see him resign if this uh, scenario one goes according to plan. And again, this has happened before in, in American history, where a president has resigned and a vice president has become the president. Let's listen to a video of when this happened on August 9th, 1974, with Richard Nixon. I have never been a quitter. To leave office before my term is completed is abhorrent to every instinct in my body. But as president, I must put the interests of America first. America needs a full-time president and a full-time Congress, particularly at this time with problems we face at home and abroad, to continue to fight through the months ahead for my personal vindication would almost totally absorb the time and attention of both the President and the Congress in a period when our entire focus should be on the great issues of peace abroad and prosperity without inflation at home. Therefore, I shall resign the presidency effective at noon tomorrow. Vice President Ford will be sworn in as president at that hour in this office. You may be seeing that in early 2025 
But the vice president that will be sworn in will likely either be Gavin Newsom or Michelle Obama. Lord help us all. <laughs> That's my prediction. <clears throat> I, I hear you. Uh, but I, I think from Biden's cold, almost dead hand, he's, I don't think he's going anywhere. I know, I know that this talk has become popular, but I don't think he's going anywhere. He's right. going to stay, and people are going to vote for him because it's better than the orange man bad. Right. That, look, that could happen. Okay, that could I'm very just, well happen. I, I'm putting my flag down. <laughs> okay, all right. Well, let, let's, let's see who ends up being right. I think it's either going to be that situation or I would not be surprised if the Democrats allow Republicans to invoke the 25th Amendment to get him out. You may disagree with me, and, and your view has, has total credence, because obviously so far people have been far more willing to go with the geriatric than evil orange man. But I really, really think that even the Democratic Party understands that this has just gone way too far. This is now in a different category, especially after that press pref, press conference where the entire point of the whole thing was to show that he's fine, and he very much proved that he isn't fine. So the final thing I'll say about this is that Gavin, uh, Gavin Governor Newsom, I'm having my Biden moments right now, Governor Gavin Newsom of California, I think has been running a shadow campaign for many months. And he, what he's doing is brilliant because he's acting like he's not running a shadow campaign. And in fact, he's been asked so many times, are you running a shadow campaign? And he has only sung the praises of the Biden-Harris administration. Let's listen to when this happened with Sean Hannity. If they come to you at the DNC and Joe is incapable of running and they ask you, are you a hard no? And it's not even it's not even optional. He's doing fantastically. I appreciate and respect the work <laughs> the president's doing and the vice president's the Biden-Harris campaign and team. So absolutely so unequivocally, I look forward would be the to next continuing person. to support their efforts. President All Biden right. will be oh. reelected. OK, but I'm telling you, that's really smart of him especially if he's running a shadow campaign because he's acting like he's the good guy. I'm not running a shadow campaign. I love President Biden. Nothing is wrong. I love Kamala Harris. Great. And Pay then... no attention to the man behind the curtain. Absolutely. Yeah. And then if they have to tap him to be VP, a.k.a. perhaps president one day, you know, if, if President Biden resigns and then he's the, the Gerald Ford of the situation, he can go, you know, I really hoped it wouldn't come to this. I never wanted this. I cared so much for Biden and Harris. But you know what? For my country, I'm going to do this. I'm telling you, putting my flag down, just saying.